Hey guys, so a customer might ask, how do you blend between mocap and hand animation? So for example, if the character's walking like this, and then you suddenly have all your controls, so you can manually control what he does after he arrives at his destination. So you can use walk cycles to save you time, and then you can put stuff by hand where you want it. Need rigs. Ace Fight Studios has rigs. Um, and the short version of this, you don't. You cheat, you make two of them, and then you just blend them. I have one which is Marty Rig Manual, which you'll see is selected here. And then you have Marty Walk, which is a separate one where I apply the motion capture like you see in my tutorial. It's basically all it is. So as you can see, I have two display tags. Like if I apply this pink thing to the jacket, you'll see that we have the guy in the pink and then he's back to brown. So if we, we just have a display tag and I use visibility here. And as you can see here, I have two keyframes and it switch from 100 to zero. And the other one switches from zero to 100. And that's it. If I delete these tags, you'll see they're both visible all the time. So you have him just standing there waiting. And then you have this guy appear here and then Marty disappears. So um, that's the short version of the tutorial. If you want to see the, uh, me actually doing it, stick around. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first, we have our Marty rig. Um, uh, let's just hide these lights. We're going to see them and probably select your body mesh and just disable this subdivision and select your pants and also disable it. This should make things a bit smoother for when we animate, move stuff. Um, let's first load in a walk cycle. Um, you upload the little whatever um, bones that you have, which is this Marty Joints FBX to mix ammo, or you can use the other one. Pick a walk cycle. Um, this is the upload button, by the way. I put in place so that he walks on the spot. This means I can pick how far I want to animate. And then when you're in Cinema 4D, you import. If you want a more extended version of this, watch the full tutorial. Then you just drag these Marty joints. Shift drag them. No, sorry, not Marty joints. Marty walking. Shift drag them. Press OK. Press No to reassign takes. And you have your motion capture. It will stop. It won't be infinite. So what you want to do is you want to press Shift F3. Middle click on this so that everything underneath is selected as well. And you want to go after and you want to go repeat and make sure this set to zero and it'll be infinite. If you don't change that, it'll stop after one loop. So now, as you can see, the joints move on forever. And now we have one Marty rig. Let's call this mocap and then control drag it and call this manual. Now we will select the smoke up one, we will select in joints. You will see under joints on the hips, there's this little thing. Select it, right click, and go select child tag of the same type and disable them. And then select this little tag up here, which is a blue one. Well, sorry, it's a PSR tag. Um, input dance here or walk, unfurl this advanced thing. Let's drag our Marty joints into here and go to basic and turn on enabled. And we have our walking Marty. So um, let's hide our, actually no, we have the walking Marty and now we need to make sure that he walks a proper distance, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna get all of this stuff and we're gonna press Alt G. So it's all in one null because we're gonna be moving that null. Now let's hide our Marty manual. And so now if we move this null for him walking, we will also move our Marty manual. Now we don't want to see all these controllers for the mocap version of Marty. So we can just get these controllers here and I'll click on them and they'll disappear. Easy. Now let's select this null. Let's call this Marty move. And on frame zero, we put a keyframe and put in here, we can press F8. So there's a white block appear there. Now let's go to frame 50 and move this guy across and again, keyframe. So now you have him walking along. You'll see his feet are very slipping. So you can move this while you have this Marty move selected. You can uh, move this guy further along. Then you'll see slips even more. Or well, you can move him in closer. And now you can see he kind of, so you can see the foot was kind of planted almost in one place. Maybe move this guy a bit more in. Nope, now it's sliding out. So let's move him two frames out. 
there you go. So basically you got a pretty much solid. Maybe you can make him walk a bit further if you want. Um, let's move him out a bit more. And now obviously we will have to take this a bit longer. That's pretty close. There is a bit of shake, a bit of sliding, but actually <laughs> I forgot to very important thing. As you can see here, he doesn't seem to be sliding much in the middle, but at the end he is sliding. That's because your Marty move is still on a curve. If we select this Marty move and we switch to our curve view, well, Marty move. And select just its position Z. See how the, you have an acceleration curve. So he first moves slowly. So he's just around zero. And then he goes to minus 200 and he accelerates and he slows down again. So what you want to do is you want to make sure the Marty move selection, so just these guys here under the Marty move, they're all linear. There you go. And now you'll see also these guys are equally distributed. So now you can see that right now he's still sliding. So you might want to pull him out a bit. No, it's more sliding. There you go, we're getting closer. Almost no sliding. That's a pretty solid plant right there. There you go. So we have them walking. Also, if you are in a hurry or you don't really care about seeing the floor, a good idea is just get a block, like a table or a bookshelf or whatever, and just put it in front of him. Oops. And then you can't see his leg sliding. Or even better, just move your camera. Actually, moving the camera is probably a good idea in general. Um, if you like, what would be to save time is just animate him walking along and walk off camera or out of shot. And then the next shot will be him standing and picking things up. That's also simple, but sometimes you have to do this. Sometimes you need to be able to see both the actions. So when he gets to his plant spot, so frame 41 here, uh, what we do is we get our Mighty Rig manual, we iron hide him. And now these controllers, all you have to do is match them up to the joints. And to do that, to make it easier, like you can obviously do it manually and move them and stuff. But that's a bit challenging. So what you do is you go to snapping, you undock this little guy, you go enable snap, 3D snapping, turn off polygon and turn on axis snapping. And then you will basically just get this thing to snap to the axis of the various controllers. Probably start with a hip controller and get him to snap there. And then you get your foot controller and snap him here. And then just rotate him. And sometimes I need to adjust them a bit. Sometimes they don't quite match up. Oops. Make sure to turn off snapping if it doesn't quite match up and you want to do that. And also here you might want to select this guy and adjust his toe wiggle. So there you go. So it matches up a bit better. But also don't remember this is just one frame switch. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close. Same thing with this guy. Turn on your snapping and bring him in. Maybe you can select all the fingers and snap them if that's important to you and uh, blend them in. If you haven't seen my tutorial about that, I have a tutorial where basically, if you want to bend all these fingers into a fist, just select these guys, the first ones, holding the shift key, click on them, and then go select children. I have a shortcut, which is called tilde C. But you can also right click and sometimes here, sometimes it's not. Press shift C and select children. I use so much that I have a shortcut. You can also just drag it out into your interface and just click it when you need it. So we have all the children selected, then press the rotate shortcut, rotate button. Make sure you have per object manipulation turned on. Something you turn this on and off, it doesn't always work. Make sure it's on, maybe double click it. And then just use your rotate, sorry, wrong one. Nope, there you go. You can just bend them into a fist all together like that. Make sure you're just on the right axis. You can adjust them a bit if you want. And there you have your fist. And then just rotate him into the, wherever you need him. Um, also here you'll notice that it's in the right place, but the hand isn't reaching. That's because you also adjust the shoulder a bit. And you lower it down. There you go. Now it matches up much better. And that's basically it. Then just keyframe these on 41. Um, match these as much as you want. Don't, you don't have to match them perfectly. This is not necessary at all. Um, they just have to be close enough to not snap too much because you're probably going to put motion blur on it anyway. And 
There you go, just. And you won't notice when it flips. They're really, they don't have to be that close. Turn off your snapping again and just adjust it a bit so that it matches more where it is. Also, again, as I said, I recommend switching cameras, but if you can't just do this, you can then adjust to where you guys match and you have your shoulders, the thing that you usually forget to move. And then just select the display tag. So you have manual, um, Right click, Cinema 40, no, Cinema 40. Render tags, display. They move this guy around, so sometimes you just have to go Shift Z and display tag and just attach it. And then on this one, it's important that here you turn on use visibility, but you keyframe this dot, not this dot. So on frame 41, where is it? That's our last frame, right? There you go. So. We keyframe this guy to 100, and then on frame 42, zero. And then this guy, keyframe on 100, and move back one frame, and switch it to zero, and keyframe. And there you go. As you can see, there's a bit of a snap, so just adjust it so there's less snapping. But also, if you get him to move, so for example, let's say we have this guy on our frame 41, keyframe, and then by frame 50, we want him to look this way. And also this guy, we want to keyframe on 41. And then you want him to, basically now when it blends, you don't even notice that there was a discrepancy. If you're going into an animation, maybe a little jarring, but anyway, it just depends how much time you want to spend, but don't try it first without spending too much time on it. Then if you want to fix it up, just go to the display tag and just disable the use. And then you can see both of them again. Display use on both of them. Disable. There you go. So that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, you can use this with any characters. Obviously, this is just me showing it on Marty, but you can do it with anything you want. Thanks for watching. And as always, remember, if you need rigs, Ace 5 Studios has rigs. We have free rigs up here you can use in your personal projects. We have Mari and Mia and 5 Pack for explainers and arms and legs. And Maria has a bunch of cats and animals you can use. And here, if you go through Mari has a full face rig, which you, can, you know, it's lots of functionality. You can use them in your projects. Mia is also fully rigged. Um, you can use her as a host or to sell your product. Um, also have the arms and legs pack, which you can put together to build your own characters. And they're already rigged, so you don't need to do any weight painting. You just have to stick them together and ready to go. Or you have 5J people for your explainer videos and other stuff. So don't forget to check it out and see you next time.